All right, man. So I want to build this studio shed office. I, I should stop calling it a shed because it'd be pretty damn fancy. I mean, just the windows alone are six thousand dollars. But it's yes. hard to <laughs> order find companies to order large picture fixed windows that don't open, but also don't have any separators in it, so you get like a complete view out of what you're looking for. Right. And since it's going to be a creative studio with a video studio and other stuff in there. The type of glass is really important. The size of the windows is super important to let light in. And then also unobstructed light is the main goal. So let's say I want a window that's eight feet wide, five feet tall. Obviously the price of that is really high mm -hmm. and it would be easier to get three 36 inch wide windows and kind of frame them in there. But then I'm gonna have those gaps in the middle that's gonna cast shadows in the studio. Yeah, you're gonna have aluminum or you're, you're going up north, you're probably going to have aluminum. You're not, you're not really going to do vinyl. But yeah, you'll have a separator where the glass meets the frame. So your, your line of sight, as they call it, you're, you're going to see the aluminum. You're not going to have all glass. You're not going to have a, glass, a wall of glass, I should say. Right. And the concern about doing that is that, one, it's an obstructed view. And then, two, we plan to actually use the inbound light in the studio instead of using artificial light right. from track lighting and things like that on the, on the, so it's a little bit of a unique need. Mm -hmm. You know, most people just care about, you know, what the mountain range looks like in the back. Right. Not trying to use the light from the outside in. Right. It's usually the other way around. Correct. So in this case, I'm running into two problems. Number one is the price of a window that's eight feet wide and five feet tall. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if you had any recommendations about that. You already pointed out one thing that I didn't, maybe didn't know of, and, and that is, if it's a quarter inch thickness, they might touch in the center and then you get this distorted view. Um, yeah, and energy values and stuff too. And then the second thing would be, um, you know, maybe I don't need eight feet wide, maybe six feet wide by four feet tall, and then just change the height at which they're framed into the wall mm -hmm. to make it more useful, mm -hmm. like viewing area. Maybe there's a size recommendation that you would have that is sort of like, you know, large, but not, $5,000 for a single. Yeah. So, so your, your main challenge where you're the kind of the challenge you're running into is the fact that, um, the actual production of the glass requires certain ovens. So you're looking at a very large piece of glass. Only certain ovens can uh, produce this glass. Certain manufacturers can produce it. Um, so you're going to pay more. And I mean, you're looking for kind of a, a specialty item. Um, so, can it be done? Absolutely. Uh, you're just going to pay more, like you just said. And you, if you're going eight feet wide, you could probably do two windows and just have one piece in the middle. Uh, four foot wide is, is not uncommon, uh, especially at five feet tall. Um, when you get over six foot and you're into the four or five foot wide, then you start running into that, that large glass issue again. Um, because you're up north, you want to keep the elements out. Uh, when I say elements, are your climate. So if it's hot outside, you want to keep it cool inside. You want to control the climate. If it's if it's cold outside, you want to keep it warm, that sort of thing. So you want insulated glass, like you said. Um, and you mentioned the glass touching. When, when you're doing such a large piece of glass, um, that airspace in the middle between the two panes, um, the smaller it is when you're expanding over such a large surface area, those two pieces can touch in the very, very middle. And, and structurally, it's not good, and energy levels, it's not good either. So um, you want to keep that airspace larger, um, but then, of course, there's a, catch, there's a catch on that where if you go too large, then you lose energy values again. So you probably want to keep around a half inch. Keep your glass thick, a quarter inch at least. I wouldn't go 3 16 definitely not an eighth. Um, but just do two tempered pieces of glass with the half inch gap and, um, you, you should be good with that. It's not, you're really fighting with your width. The height is not an issue. So you'd probably say that the max width to kind of keep the cost down. And then also you brought up another good point, which is material handling and actually installing this. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this out in the boonies. You got to hire helpers in order to get it done. Absolutely. We're talking about a 10 foot wide window or something, that's going to be 700 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's probably not feasible to install that in the no, so, but I mean, I'm sure somebody's done it before, right? <laughs> you know, I don't want to make this harder on myself than it yeah, has to be. Yeah, absolutely. So do you think I bring the size down to, say, six feet wide and then maybe four to five feet tall or, or high? And then that will bring down the cost, make it more 
longer standard oh, size. Oh, of course. And then also more manageable of a weight. Oh yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you're you're looking at insulated glass, so you're I mean you're doubling the weight of a of a standard uh -huh. uh, single pane uh, tempered piece of glass, so it is heavier. Um, you're not looking at impact, so you only need maybe three, four guys instead of you know six. But um, it, yes, you're gonna be you're gonna have a weight challenge. Um, you this might go outside the conversation a little bit, but uh, when you call, talk about installation, there may be window um, installers out there where they could build the window in the the shed or the luxury shed <laughs> um, where they can build the frame and then you know they can get the suction cups and install the the glass inside the frame on site that will help a little bit of weight and you know bending and that sort of thing on the frame um, so you have you do have options um, but the advantage you you do have you're looking at a fixed window a picture window where there's no sashes nothing move nothing's operable um, so it's going to be one solid unit um, so transporting won't be as big of a deal. Okay. And then help me out with, with, um, touch on that, the coatings and like the low energy or the low E stuff, mm -hmm. all the, the, um, you know, window and door distributors that I was trying to order through for New England delivery all push, you know, these low E coatings and, you know, it's, they all have different marketing, but it's basically this thing that's sprayed on the inside and blah, blah, blah. Since we want to use this as a studio and we really don't want to filter the light, mm -hmm. um, would you say that there's more than maybe a 15 to 30 percent difference in thermal performance, like in the winter time in Maine, from a, a coated window to just a, a what do you call one that's just standard with no coatings? It's like a, just clear or tinted. No, no low E. Uh, I mean, there's. I guess it's not really a technical term for it. So uh, let me just put some hard numbers to it. Mm -hmm. It's February 2020. It's 12 below zero outside. We get a fire going. Temperature is, you know, 70 degrees inside. Mm -hmm. I have windows that are low E or it has the coating and all this stuff. I probably paid an extra $1,500 per window to get that. Mm -hmm. How much better is my, my heat loss or my thermal performance? Versus if I would have saved money and gotten the non-coated. Yeah. It, well, the, first off, there's probably over 100 different coatings you can choose from, right? So uh, a basic coating that kind of stays clear. Um, you don't really see a tint and it's sprayed on. You're, you're going to notice. Uh, it definitely is going to keep it warmer inside versus nothing at all. Um, especially just, just trapping the cold out if that makes sense. So you're, you want to keep the cold from coming in. So that low E is, you know, that's where that low E really kicks in effect. Um, it's, it's when you get into the higher low E's, you really see the value change. Um, the price tag usually go up, but I mean, we're talking big time uh, energy savings. Um, you're not going to want that though, because you're going to block that light out. You're gonna, and you may t even take a chance of seeing it in the recordings. Um, that's definitely possible because it is kind of a filmy look, like a shiny, some cases uh, a rainbow look even, depending how th how thick the coating is or what kind of coating it is. Um, so I would say probably do a, a a lower level low E just to really help. I mean, 12 below, <laughs> that's cold, <laughs> right? So anything that you add to this window is going to help, yeah, absolutely. So if there's a potential for what you call the rainbow look, or basically like if I just wanted a picture window to observe a good view on, on the property or something, or let's just take a high rise beach condo owner. They put these you know windows in to keep the heat out so the place runs cooler. Uh, you know, why, why would people potentially use something that changes the way the ocean looks? And be, you know, We're usually you're fighting with a lot more heat there. So, and you you want to you want to take a lot of the reflection out from the outside coming in. Um, there's also a lot of codes that they have to abide by. Um, one, for example, is called a turtle code. So uh, down here in Florida, the sea turtles, 
they when they hatch they go to the ocean if you don't have the right kind of glass they think it's the moon and they start they go the wrong way and they die right so there's certain codes that why down in the in the coast and the beach lines that you have to have certain low e's or certain tents that that have to you know work together so you're gonna that's kind of a separate i I hate to say it's kind of a separate issue um, where you're just kind of battling with cold and you have a special situation where you're recording and you want as much light as possible, but you also don't want to be shivering while you're <laughs> doing your interview or whatever project, right? All right, so best solution for me would probably be either no low E coating or a bare minimum. A bare minimum, yeah. Um, and since you're doing such a large um, opening, I would say bare minimum. Wor worst case, don't do anything at all. And then just buy something, uh, you know, a tent thing you can roll down. So when you're doing your editing or, you know, you're, you're getting your notes together, you're not freezing. But when it's up, you just, you know, you just bear, bear with whatever. Now you're going to control them. You're controlling your, your climate inside and you're dealing with insulated glass. So you're still, you're getting a lot of benefit. Um, it's just those low E's will just increase as you go up, you know, but you can go as dark as not barely even seeing outside and you're not going to want that. So stick with clear glass and a bare minimum, uh, low E. So on three sides of the office studio, we're going to have these picture windows for, for, uh, you know, to create the environment that we need for the studio. And then on the other end of the structure, we're going to have entry door. Um, and then somewhere since the, all the picture windows are fixed. We should probably have some type of operable windows for ventilation. Is there any particular type of like uh, setup that you would recommend where there's, you know, one above a picture window or something to create a cross breeze or allow the, the building to ventilate on both ends? Or can you do it from one side or opposing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have many options. Um, Depending on your setup, I mean, you can even do your fixed windows, and if you have an extra foot, you can do like a an awning style window that you can crank and it pop open. Um, there's, or even on your your sides, you can do a single hung or double hung windows. It's a, a sash that slides up or down. The double hung has the top sash; they both slide up and down. Uh, you have options with that. Those are pretty popular down here in Florida. Um, <clears throat> out. Out in Maine, I'm not 100% um, what is common out there, but casements and those kind of windows that kind of open up with a crank, you know, to allow the elements in, uh, you know, those could work as well. For your swing door, you might want to consider doing, um, getting a swing door with a, a window all from top to bottom. So if you need extra light, if you're filming, you can supply that. And maybe even get blinds inside so you can roll it up and down. Pretty much. I mean, you're gonna have, you're gonna have frame and casement around on the on the, the slab, the door itself. Um, but at least that way, you know, if you need some extra lighting, you decide to move, you know, where you're filming, you know, you might be able to gain some more light that way. And those, most of the time, any any swing door like that, that you get glass are always gonna be insulated. Considering the glass and the windows and the type and options, is there anything that I should be asking about that could either potentially be a problem or I get the place to build and I wish I would have asked before I ordered these? Um, only because I'm not familiar with and, and obviously there's opportunity here to uh, do some research and share what we find. Um, but because it's so cold, um, the glazing that happens between the frame and the glass might be important. Um, it's, it's just, uh, there's different materials out there. Some use like, uh, you know, the, the material around like the, your windshield or your car, that black stuff, yeah. that's, that's kind of a, gla that's one, uh, type of glazing material, very common in impact units. Um, but they also have like a Marine glaze, just a, a rubber seal. And then, uh, some low end manufacturing would just use some kind of padding, you know? So there's many options, but it might matter up there. I'm 12 below. 
Uh, I mean, I would freeze to death, <laughs> this Florida kid. But, you know, you, you want to make sure because there's going to be moisture. There's going to be cold. Things are going to freeze. You don't want to... Um, you don't want to interrupt that glazing bead in the glass or the, between the frame and the glass and cause condensation to build inside the glass because then your insulated, um, your insulated glass is then compromised. So you, if you're going to spend that much money on a window, you want to make sure uh, that material is going to work in that climate. Okay. All right. So we, we can do a side research project on that because <laughs> it's a, actually a very good question. I didn't even think about it. So. Okay.